Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Ergonomics and Facilities Planning for Hospitality. This is week one, so please uh, bring out your handouts for week one. Ergonomics it is commonly referred as the human factors. It is application of physiological and physiological physiological principles to the engineering and design of products, processes, and system. The goal of human factor is to reduce human error, increase productivity, and enhance safety and comfort with a specific focus on the interaction between human and the thing of interest. Ergonomics in hospitality industry. Ergonomics prevents these types of injuries by fitting the job to the person using proper equipment and work practice. Ergonomic solution for the hospitality industry. The hospitality industry is a prime candidate to implement ergonomic solution. Workers in the restaurants and lodging facilities perform many types of jobs. Many of these jobs are very physical, dishwashers, servers, bartenders, and luggage handlers are all at risk of on-the-job injuries. Sinitas, Sintas Corporation released a list of the top restaurant injuries in 2011. Among them were sprains and strains, as they stated, misplaced or hard to reach items can cause worker injury due to workers can also suffer from strains due to improper lifting. Okay, so ano ba yung proper lifting? Okay, so I will, I have a video here to show you yung proper lifting, yung safety. Okay, na dapat yung gawin during, uh, sa pagbubuhat ng mabibigat. Safe lifting tips. How do you lift objects? Do you keep your back healthy? One of the biggest causes of back injury is lifting objects incorrectly. So the big question is how to lift a light or heavy object safely. What is the recommended way to lift heavy weights? Of course, one of the common mistakes is rounding the back, which creates a serious risk of damaging the lumbar vertebrae. The deadlift is suitable for heavy weights. Keep your back straight. Hold the load as close to your body as possible. This principle is very important in lifting weights high. Variation, deadlift with arm support. Another option for lifting heavy objects is the squat. Here too, we must make sure to keep the weight near the body and keep the back straight. The erector spina muscles stabilize the spine. Another option is lunge with arm support. Resting the arm on the thigh directs the forces to the ground. Bend the knees and keep the back straight. This variation is like the squat but with legs closer together. On the left, we see a movement that is not recommended because it creates ongoing damage to the lower back. On the right, we can see careful maintenance of a straight back. What about light objects and forward bending? Bending forward is not a contraindication in our daily life. It is a very important movement to be kept and maintained. In many occasions in life, we need and should use segmental rounded bending in healthy back cases, such as in tying shoes, picking a light object off the ground, etc. In many daily activities that are not involved with higher vertical pressure, rounding the spine comes naturally. What about bending forward with a pathological spine condition? In cases of various back pathologies, this pattern should be avoided due to intervertebral disc problems. In a pathological spinal condition, it is recommended to maintain a straight back even when lifting light objects. Note, you should consult with a doctor in any pathological condition. For lifting medium to heavy weight, keep your back straight. For a lightweight object, we need and should use segmental rounded bending. In a pathological spinal condition, it is recommended to maintain a straight back. OK, 
Okay. So you see. Safe lifting tips. Okay, next is housekeeping. The riskiest job. Housekeeper lift and carry heavy objects, push heavy carts and vacuums, reach high and low to clean rooms, and then do it over and over again. The Center for Disease Control says about 1.8 million people worked in the traveler accommodation industry in 2008, of those 400,000 were hotel housekeepers. Among other things, they are at risk for musculus calistal injuries from bending and pushing, slip and fall injuries, respiratory illness or skin reaction from cleaning chemicals. Okay. So I also have a video for housekeeping safety tips. There. I'm done. Your workplace can contain both obvious and hidden hazards. They can lead to lost production, painful injuries, even death. Taking some time to think safety and clean up your workplace can make the difference between a safe and productive day and one you'd rather forget. Let's take a look at some basic things that you can do to protect yourself and your coworkers. One of the keys to accident prevention is to have a good safety attitude. You need to develop good safety habits, learn to use sound judgment, and exercise self-control. You can't let yourself get angry or frustrated when things don't go your way. And you need to know our body's limitations, just like you know its abilities. It may sound easy, but it takes some real thought and practice to learn to avoid mental and physical stress when you're on the job. You have to learn to pace yourself, recognize when you need to take a break, and never to bite off more than you can chew. Getting too comfortable with a job can also lead to accidents. When things become routine, we sometimes forget the hazards that are lurking around the next corner. That's when we need to remember to stay sharp. You should never let your body run on autopilot with your mind somewhere else. Don't let pressure to get the job done make you reckless either. You can't take chances with your safety or anyone else's. You can avoid risky actions by using sound judgment. For example, never disable or remove power tool or machine guards to speed up your routine. They're in place to help keep our hands and fingers safe. Lock on with anti-fall devices when working up high. Okay, so those are the examples. Next is in the hospitality industry, about 62% of housekeeping injuries are muscles. musculoskeletal. Bed making is the leading cause. Mattresses are bigger and far heavier than they used to be. That increases lifting strain. Mattress sit at below the waist level. They are often in close quarters with walls or other furniture. Housekeepers must assume awkward position to make the bed. Research researchers also outlined ways to improve housekeeper health, such as encouraging them to wear comfortable shoes, starting the work day in, with warm-up exercise, early reporting for aches or pains, training on, on safer, more efficient ways to work. Okay, to classification of ergonomic injuries. We have cumulative trauma disorder or CTDs, exposure-driven injury to soft tissue caused by prolonged exposure to multiple ergonomic risk factors factors typically develop in small body segments like fingers, wrist, elbows, and neck. We have a sample of CTDs, tendon disorder, inflammation of tendons, lateral 
epicondylitis, sorry, nerve disorders, compression of nerve from repeated or sustained exposure, carpal tunnel syndrome, neurovascular disorder, compression of blood vessels and, and or nerves from repeated exposure. Raynon phenomenon, also known as white finger syndrome. Okay, also have your strain, sprains. Uh, event, these are injuries to connect uh, connective tissue caused by single forceful event. Lifting heavy objects in awkward position. It is common to large body segments like back, legs, and shoulders. And the risk of injuries increase with the presence of multiple risk factors. So what are the risk factors? Static loading, repetition, contact stress, awkward, awkward posture, vibration, force. Risk of injury increase with prolonged exposure to any of these ergonomic risk factors. The presence of multiple risk factors within the single job task. So what to do? We also need to prevent arm up and stretch before activities that are repetitive, static, or prolonged. Take frequent breaks, respect pain. So if you have uh, injured pain, uh, report nyo kaagad para hindi na siya lumala. Recognize early signs of inflammatory process. Kapag may namamaga or may naramdaman kayo, report kaagad. Be aware of workstation environment. So, ano ba yung pwede natin gawin to prolong? Okay. Maintain neutral posture. Maintain erect position of back and neck, shoulders relax. Position equipment at work direct, directly in front of and close to your major task. Keep upper arms close to the body. Elbows 90 to 100 degrees. Keep feet flat on the floor. Upper body weight resting on sit bones. Risk as neutral as possible. Safe zone for wrist movement is 15 degrees in all directions. Avoid bending neck forward for a prolonged period of time. Uh, avoid static position for a prolonged time. Modify, modify task. Alternate activities frequently rotate heavy or repetitive tasks with lighter, less repetitive ones. Avoid repetitive or prolonged grip activities. Kasi pag masyadong uh, yung hawak ka ng hawak sa mga bagay, minsan pag paulit ng paulit, yung last grip mo dun sa ginagawa mo, naghihina ka na so wala ka ng energy, wala ka ng lakas para mag-grip. Avoid pinching with wrist inflection or wrist deviation. Take frequent breaks to stretch and rest hands. Okay, so here, before we go to the activities, I have here another video uh, for a safe uh, introduction for the CTD. So, so please watch. Construction workers under 35 years old have as about as many back injuries as those older than 35. Key point, practicing good ergonomics keeps you safe and working your entire career. In these ergonomics units, you will first learn about anatomy so that you can better understand what gets injured. And you'll learn about types of injuries that can end your career called cumulative trauma. We'll present the risk factors that lead to these injuries, including heavy lifting, awkward postures, and repetitive and prolonged activities. Then you'll learn about solutions to keep you safe and minimize the wear and tear on your body. Let's begin with anatomy. As an apprentice, you learn about the structural characteristics of brick and block. Likewise, to understand how to prevent injuries to soft tissues like your ligaments, muscles, and discs, it's important to know the structural characteristics of your body. This is anatomy. 
First, let's talk about your back. Your backbone is called the spine. The bones of the spine are called vertebrae. Right now, feel the bones behind your neck. You're pressing on part of the vertebra. The spine balances on top of the pelvic bones, which are also where the leg bones attach to the hip joints. Ligaments connect one bone to another bone. Ligaments hold you together and allow you to move, but they also limit motion to prevent too much wear and tear to your joints. Ligaments provide structural stability to joints, much like clips hold brick to a wall, while muscles provide stability to your entire body and create movement. If you didn't have muscles to secure and move your bones, you'd fall over. Muscles lengthen and shorten to move your bones around your joints. Muscles are attached to bones by tendons at each end of the muscle. Muscles allow you to lift, push, pull, kick, bend, and all other movements as well as stand still. There are several layers of muscles along the spine and throughout the trunk. Large muscles provide the power you need to lift CMU and the smaller muscles close to the spine keep your spine secure and maintain your posture. Let's see how much you know about common work injuries. What do you call injuries to your muscles, ligaments, and tendons? Record your answers in your workbook. An injury to a muscle is called a strain. An example is a strained or pulled back muscle. An injury to a ligament is called a sprain. An example is turning your ankle or knee. A tendon injury is called tendonitis. An example is tendonitis in the front of your shoulder or the outside of your elbow, frequently called tennis elbow. Between every two vertebrae, there are discs. The disc has jelly-like material on the inside. The outside of the disc has strong, fibrous bands. These fibrous bands are kind of like the belts in a radial tire. They help to keep the disc strong and hold the jelly in, just like the radial belts add strength to a tire. Now let's talk about the shoulder. The shoulder has the most movement of any joint, so it needs tough ligaments to hold the bones together. Over those ligaments are many muscles that provide strength stability, and allow movement when you lift and place brick and block. The most important shoulder muscles are called the rotator cuff muscles. They control shoulder movement to keep the shoulder joint sturdy and stable. There is a tunnel in the shoulder. A rotator cuff tendon goes through this tunnel and can be pinched. This is why this part of the shoulder is called the pinch zone. The wrist is another important joint for masons to know about. Like the spine and shoulder, the wrist has bones. These eight bones are called carpals. The bones are held together by ligaments. There are important nerves that allow the hand to function. One of these nerves runs through a tunnel created by the carpal bones and into the hand. The wrist also has muscles that move the hand. Most of the wrist muscles are closer to the elbow with long tendons that run down the forearm. Now that you know something about anatomy, let's talk more about kinds of injuries. Have you heard the term cumulative trauma? What do you think it means? Just like there are different ways to get a flat tire, there are different ways you can injure yourself. You could hurt yourself in a single accident called an acute trauma injury. This would be like running over a nail. Even if your tires are brand new, they would be damaged. More commonly, injuries occur slowly over time, which is called cumulative trauma injury. This would be like driving too long on the same set of tires that become worn. In both cases, the same disaster strikes. 
Acute trauma happens immediately, like spraining an ankle while hiking or getting hurt during a workplace accident, such as a fall. Cumulative trauma seems invisible because the damage builds up over time and occurs from repetitively doing the same thing over and over. Now let's simulate cumulative trauma. Just like the wire eventually breaks with enough bending, all materials, whether concrete block or human muscles, ligaments or discs, have structural limits and can eventually break. It may take months or even years for the damage to your muscles, ligaments, joints and discs to be severe enough to turn into a painful injury. Chronic overuse causes many small microscopic tears to form in our tissues. These tears heal with small scars throughout the tissues. Over time, we get more and more of these scars and the tissues lose their stretchiness, also called elasticity. Because tissues with scars can't fully lengthen and shorten, they make your muscles weaker. When muscles aren't working optimally, you're more likely to have fatigue, pain, and eventually a cumulative trauma injury. The cycle continues over time, and you may get to a place where even a simple task, like bending to tie your shoes before heading to the store, can cause back pain, or depending on the activity, pain in your shoulders, neck, or other areas. Can you remember ever getting back pain when you did something minor, like picking up something small on the floor? This might have been the result of cumulative trauma. Acute and cumulative trauma back strains and sprains can be mild and heal on their own in a few days or weeks. However, it's common with cumulative trauma that these injuries become frequent and chronic, lasting months or more. That makes them difficult to heal. Can you think of a time when you had a muscle or joint pain that lasted more than a week? More serious cumulative trauma back injuries occur to the discs in your spine. If you constantly bend forward at work, and especially when you bend and twist, you may tear some of the outer fibers in your low back discs. Eventually, some of the jelly-like center of the disc is pushed backward onto the nerves, just like squeezing a jelly donut. When the disc is pushed far enough backward to cause pain, we sometimes call it a slipped disc, though the correct medical terms are disc protrusion, or if more severe, a disc herniation. When this happens, it may cause severe pain and numbness in the sciatic nerve that runs down the back of your leg. If you experience this type of pain, go see your healthcare provider. These injuries can be disabling and cause you to miss many days of work. Neck and upper back muscles can also be damaged from cumulative overuse. We frequently call a muscle strain in our neck a stiff neck. Also, when the muscles in the neck become very short and tight, they can cause muscle tension headaches. And just like the low back, we can injure or herniate the discs in our neck. This results in severe pain and numbness into the arm and hand, making it difficult to handle masonry materials and tools. The wrist has a tunnel made of carpal bones and a ligament. A nerve runs through this tunnel. With overuse, such as frequent bending of the wrist or work in awkward wrist postures, the tunnel becomes inflamed and the nerve becomes irritated. This can cause pain and numbness in the hand, called carpal tunnel syndrome. It's often disabling and can result in time loss from while it heals or from surgery. Even after surgery, symptoms frequently come back. Can you think of a coworker who has had hand numbness or carpal tunnel syndrome? Have you ever had numbness in your fingers or hands? 
Try this activity to simulate numbness in your fingers. Think of how this could impact your ability to work. Finally, let's talk about the most common shoulder injury you could get as a mason, a rotator cuff injury. We've mentioned that there are four key shoulder muscles that form the rotator cuff. They're frequently injured from cumulative overuse and working in awkward postures. Rotator cuff injuries are painful and can require surgery to repair. This means time loss and sometimes leads to longer term problems in the shoulder region that can affect your career. We've all had back pain and injuries, but disc injuries are pretty serious. Which one of these could cause injury to the discs in your lower back? Okay, so those are the examples. Sorry. Fair activity. Okay, research proper working posture for the following department at slash actions. Housekeeping, food and beverage service, great staff, bellman, porter, front office or front desk clerk, kitchen or chef. And present your findings in a paper, discuss the proper working posture, include, including pictures showing the wrong and correct posture with a discussion of the rationale why one posture is wrong and the other, other correct. Present in class. Uh, siguro ano lang, kahit isang department lang, mamili kayo sa lima. Okay? So thank you for watching, listening. God bless.